Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Second Cup of Coffee. Pastor Tom with you. Uh, this is the month of March, and we're kicking off a new series called Ask A-S-K. Ask. We're looking at a scripture that a lot of us know as Christians. Um, we rephrase it a little bit, but how it actually reads in the New King James Version, James 4, verse 2, the end of verse 2, you do not have because you do not ask. The way I heard it coming up, you have not because you ask not. And the kind of implication with that is this, guys. If I ask God, uh, the only reason I'm not getting it is because I haven't asked God. The reality of it is this. I may not be getting it because I'm asking the wrong question, which we'll talk about more next week. But I have to be okay and settled with this word. No. No. How do I know that? James, John, they were brothers. They asked God a question. Or they asked Jesus a question. Can we sit at your right hand or at your left hand when, we, when you come into your kingdom? And he lays it out for them. Do you know what it's going to cost me to come into my kingdom? Can you, can you drink the cup uh, that I'm going to have to drink? Can you walk through the baptism of what I'm going to have to walk through? Death, burial, resurrection. Uh, the cup is the cup of wrath. Can you do that? They're like, yeah, we can do that. No clue what he's talking about. We can. And he said, you're going to. But what you ask, the answer is no, because it's my father who has prepared those things. I can't make that decision. I can't give you something that's not mine to give. That's important as Christians because we put responsibility on Jesus to fulfill things in our lives that we were never designed to fulfill. And we drive a wedge in our relationship because we don't know how to deal with the answer being no. I won't go into cultural things, but you can see it rife in our culture that, uh, that this mindset of I deserve, I should have, I am as just as worthy as anybody else to receive the challenge with that is that if I have not been designed by the creator to operate in the thing that I desire, I should not be walking in that because it was not prepared for me and I was not prepared for it. That's a tough thing to wrestle down sometimes because I can see other people doing what I think that I should be able to do and I have to come back to the original designer and the original design and walk in that. What do I do with that wrestle? I have two options with this wrestle. I see it, I desire it, I want it. I ask, answer is no. What do I do? Well, if you look at James, before you get to the verse that I quoted, he said, where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and you war. What does that all mean? It, all, it means this. I have a desire, but it's actually a lust, which is nothing more than misguided desire. And I don't know how to let go of that desire. So I ask, the answer is no, but the problem is I'm still latched on to it. How do I let go? How do I give up the desire? I'll give you wisdom that my wife gave me. If you have a desire and it's not being fulfilled, I'm not talking in a sexual way, I'm just talking like you desire. Say you desire the gift of um, to be an evangelist or a prophet or an apostle. One of those things that Paul talks about. The first place you go to is God. If God says, no, that's not what I called you to. How do I let go of that desire? You ask God and say, God, if this is not a desire that I have, or let's just say you're uncertain. You go to God. You don't know if he said yes or no. Okay. God, if this is a desire that you've given me, fulfill it. If it's a desire that you haven't given me, Take it away. But right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in a box and I'm going to set it down. And my next prayer is, if this is not what you are talking about today, what are you talking about? And that's what I'm going to do. And I hear the Lord say, if you'll say that prayer, 
I'll begin to move in the earth today because I can move through people who are committed to what I'm saying right now rather than trying to convince me about something that I'm not talking about and has not yet been determined. You can walk in your purpose every day very easily just by listening and being obedient to what he says for that day. The desire will take care of itself. He will, let me say it a different way. He will take care of the desire. But for today, walk in. What do you want to do today? And allow him to speak to that. Walk that out. And he'll take care of the rest. Hope that encourages you. I know no is not easy. I know we don't like to hear no. But no is sometimes necessary because we are trying to fit ourselves into a place that was never prepared for us and we're not prepared for. But if we let it go, trust God with the answer and then walk out what he's asking us to do today, your life will be well lived and you'll change the world. Appreciate you guys. So grateful that you found us. We're going to pick this subject up again next week as we look at Ask, A-S-K, and what that means to us in the earth today. God bless you. Thank you.